We don't deal in cash anymore, cards only. Well, here's a sign. Due to a worldwide IT outage, we can only accept cash until further notice. Apologies for the inconvenience. Let that be a warning to us all about the virtues of saying goodbye to cash. Because grit down is system down for you. You can't buy anything. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Part of the outreach team of Silver Bullion here in Singapore, where we want to help you truly secure your wealth. This is part two of our interview with Francis Hunt. We're going to be talking more about the reset as Francis sees it and what are the things that we can do. Francis, welcome back and let's just get into it. You laid out a good framework for, for the Trump trade that we may see coming up. Uh, but I want to go a little bit slightly larger here because you know over the years you've been a very unique very tuned in man and having said that besides the market sniper you're also known as a crypto sniper and also the reset sniper and regarding the reset sniper can you tell me about this what things are you looking at in this reset because i fully believe anyone watching this is getting a sense that things are kind of sort of getting out of control in some ways we're in the we're in the stages. We've already begun uh, a debt collapse, Patrick, and it's a debt. People get confused, and you just have to keep this bringing it back to a simple key point. There's way too much debt created, and people don't understand that because they understand equities, Coca Cola, Toyota. You know, they drive the car, they bought the the can. Um, debt is like ooh, a woo woo thing. It's really not. It's this simple. Your your government spends more money than it should because it gets tax income and it's the same as you living off you spending all your salary and borrowing another same amount again in america i think it's about tax only covers 52 percent of expenditure and i got that stat some time ago so i'm not up to date with it it's quite possibly fallen below interest payments by the way news alert this is from today's numbers of your tax that you pay as a u.s person 76% of it goes right now, all of it, 76, just about through three quarters of it goes just on interest rate, interest payments. So the exorbitant privilege of being the people that crea uh, allows the borrowing of your money to be into existence are being paid right now, 76% of every dollar you pay in tax that group of people you want to talk about privilege and many people are you know they attach a race and all sorts of things to privilege you want to talk about privilege that's the exorbitant privilege being part of that banker class that transnational banker class that was given the license to say we create your money and we borrow it into existence and you owe us interest on that very first dollar well right now 76 percent of all americans tax payments are going exactly to service interest only on the people that were given that license literally for free um and you could have had government issued money but you have this third party banking cartel so just think about that so they spend a whole bunch more than what they get in and all that gets put on a tab to the same bankers that are now getting paid a much higher interest rate. And you are the collateral. So taxation has to go up, otherwise collapse. And service reduction and denial has to go down. So much less infrastructure spending, much less services in your municipalities for you know, dustbins being picked up and et cetera, et cetera, and free this, free healthcare picked up by state, much less of that. Erosion in value, erosion in value without an opt out and a much higher tax burden is an absolute guarantee. It's a mathematical guarantee. Doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat, the financial mathematics will dictate it. And if they don't do it, the debt markets will start to collapse. So you've got to do something. You've either cutting back on the benefits uh, and you're increasing the income, which is tax, which you have to do both. If you do neither or only one and you don't get enough money, you'll continue to issue ever more volumes of new debt in an environment where the interest rate is what it is. And you will be forced to pay that 
interest rates and more and more tax income, which is already at 76% of everything Americans are paying, will be served just to pay the cartel that allowed you the license to borrow your own money into existence. It's, I mean, it's, it's mathematical failure. So you are in a debt collapse. We can talk till kingdom come. It's a fact. Uh, so as a result of that, one of the most important things in a debt collapse, which is an impoverishment of the nation, you are the toxic bank. These guys that are funding Ukraine and Israel, that's a money laundering around. They're stripping the final gold pieces out of the Grand Hotel in lieu of the coming Mongol horde before they leave it, you know, barren and the walls literally down to the paint. They know it's coming and they're stripping it off and you're sitting there in the pew of the cathedral uh, waiting and you're wondering why all this is happening, why there's so much more obvious corruption, because it's end of time debt collapse and you're about to be taken over and new systems. No one's going to be chasing the criminals of a previous end of an old cycle. They're going to start afresh and they're going to tell you hope and change, new cycle, clean the slate, da 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 everybody again and all the criminals forgiven because they're all part of a chosen group. Uh, you've, as I've already said, this exorbitant privilege. So if you look at it like that, what do you have to do? In that situation, preserve your financial state is one of the first things you have to do. And gold holdings is absolutely fulcrum to that, which is why we were discussing that aspect about gold and how it's the least volatile of all of them, uh, the, the silver and also the other industrial metal proxies like copper, etc. Hold it, hold it, hold it, physically hold it yourself. There's rehypothecation, there's all sorts of things going on. And that will just give you a further, that fraudulence will actually give you a further bump in price once those that think they have gold find out they have paper contracts that they have to enforce in a court. And when they when they get to that court and win out, uh, they'll find that there's one bar for the 10 claims and they only get a tenth of a bar anyway. So after lots of costs. So you are going to get a super surge in that. There's going to be a reversion to mean. So secure your financial balance sheet. Then you have to get into the second tier levels of protection. That's the reset sniper stuff. Having been one of few who actually did the right things and saw the mathematical certainty, you now need to protect from a horde of people that were used to a social middle class, lower middle class, upper middle class existence that just lived on the high hog, bought the financialization of everything, bought into digitization of everything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and now I've found that they've been ripped off and they are mad because you've done well. And you, and I, I certainly advise discretion in this thing. Don't be telling people how well you're doing. It's not the time to be buying a Ferrari and all of these things and flashing wealth. Um, but you will be loathed for being smart because the masses will be continually reminded that they could have avoided this impoverishment had they been like you. So they want to see you lose too. And in a gulag environment, ratting out your friends is part of the Bolshevism that you will get this, the surveillance finance, the phones, the devices, the confiscation, you now get into all these second level uh, frontier risks that you have to have a plan for, which means optionality, different countries, arbitraging systems, multiple places of location. It's a complicated discussion. And of course, personal security, which then gets into guns, houses, basements, safes, you know, a lot of things that can be spoken about that I won't drag you into the weeds on. But many other people have far better, ex uh, you know, expertise on than I, although I'm very interested in them all. So that's how you should view things. Start with the money. If you have money and wealth, you can buy in protection. You can buy in food. You can buy in. Get local, get suppliers, make friends with sound-minded people that are similar and less likely to be looking at your pie and going hungry and salivating and wanting to knock you out to eat your own your 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 pie. And that's why you need to surround yourself with like-minded community. Start at an internet level, but then find out where there's a, a rich group of people that are be, uh, preparing uh, accordingly for what has to be what's coming. And that's a massive leveling of the wealth. We have a perversion. If you see the chart, the total number of people in the West are like this, and it's super low. And then you have on the right, it's like this, 
It's massive. It's really big. And it's the Southeast Asia, much higher populations. But then on the same chart, the super wide, but you have the average income and it's like this. And on the West side, where the population is super low, the average income is like that. It's obvious what's coming. It's a leveling of that income so that you are like all else. And there's an upgrade potentially coming for the others. But the degree that you don't go down is not the degree the other side goes up, unfortunately. And I, I saw this in South Africa. You could take, you know, 3.5 million middle class whites. It doesn't lift the standard of 60 million whites and blacks uh, and, and all other colors in between. So everybody gets a downgrade in living standards and has to pay for everybody else. And this is at a global level what we're going to be going through. The small population, I mean, you're about 300 million in Europe, 300 million in the USA, a little bit in Canada, a little bit in Australia, New Zealand, versus the five or six billion uh, in the rest of the world, Africa, India, China, you know, the whole bank uh, schmoozle. So that, that's one hell of a downgrade in lifestyle because your governments won't be able to pay for things anymore. The debt will collapse. And when the debt collapse, interest rates spike. So you have to have protected yourself also against that eventuality. Buy gold now, retire debt so that you are not exposed and especially debt, which is at variable rates. Uh, not to say you'll be permanently safe on fixed rates, but at least start with the ones that is high and at variable. I have, I'm fortunate to have no debt, um, but, uh, you know, everybody starts somewhere and just go ahead and start. If you're enjoying this interview with Francis Hunt and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And did you know that at Silver Bullion, when you store with us, you can use your bullion as collateral for a secured loan. Silver Bullion's peer-to-peer -peer bullion secured loan program has enabled people storing with us to have made some 600 million plus U.S. dollars worth of loans with zero defaults. To find out more, go to www.silverbullion.com.sg and click on the P2P Loans tab or email me, patrick at silverbullion.com.sg and I'll help to get you started. Most people, they're, they're starting to sense or, or they sense that there is both uh, worry, they have worry, but yet there is also opportunity out there when it comes to, say, like diversifying the location of where a person may be holding their assets. Yes. So uh, I think you said almost two things in there, diversification, and you're also saying there's opportunity. So sometimes when you hear about this, this, you know, this collapse, it sounds like I'm a negative guy. No, there's huge opportunities for people that position correctly. The big shorts is coming again, only bigger um, for those that trade. Uh, being somebody who's useful in a different world, especially people with good hands, people that grow things, farms, there's opportunities abounding in here uh, and start thinking about how you will in a sort of post financial ap apocalypse, what are your skill sets? Because suddenly practical skill sets become super useful again. That's one thing. And then diversification of location is very, very useful. For example, Patrick, we are very bullish Singapore. I'm very bullish the, the Straits Index. And I feel that Singapore would be the acceptable face of Eastern uh, financial hub rather than a Beijing or a Shanghai would be. There will be a, a great deal of resistance from Europe um, and other areas for an ex-communist state. Singapore's um, financial reputation, reputation for order, the quality of its airport. I mean, I was just reading about how, you know, the first impression of a place and the last impression of a place is where you fly into and where you fly out. You know, there was some real good thought that went on there. That, and it's not a new nation and it's not a new success. It's a long standing success. So, you know, this for businessmen flying in and flying out, it's a pleasure to go to relative to Many of the New York airports, I have to say, and that's not all American airports and but all European ones, but it's a it's a it's you know top class. So having optionality and having different locations where your precious metals are held will give you different legal jurisdictions. Singapore's done quite a good job of being relatively neutral. I wouldn't have wanted to be there during CV19. I'm not, you know, all loving and all praising 
uh, I don't believe in, you know, being belief and falling in love with things. This is a, an assessment. But in terms of law and order and financial standing, this is not one that's going to go all in on confiscation all of a sudden, you know, um, without real and, and, and repatriation, without real justification. They will assert their judicial power to maintain their reputation as a financial hub because without their reputation, they realize they are nothing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very good potential backup plan. And a lot of your viewers will be US, Canada, some will be Australia. They should be observing the trajectory of their current political discourse and feeling concerned. If you're not, I'm not here to remind you and feel bad for it. I'm here to remind you as a prod to take positive action, to do things that are better for you. Uh, those things that make you uncomfortable are gifts because they force action. And Singapore is a hosting zone, uh, or a, uh, my apologies, custody zone for precious metals is something many of the people should consider. Uh, as well as we use Panama, um, which is American friendly, but not America, uh, and has a zombie apocalypse plan for everything. Um, and we use other locations. Switzerland, okay. Um, middle of the EU makes me a tad nervous, but they've been pretty independent. So th there's a couple of options, but Singapore is a big emerging star uh, there. And I noticed when I was on Bullion Vault that the silver sold for a little bit more there than it did anywhere else. So there's, a, there's actually a hosting or a, a custody premium. And I would put that on the neutrality and the non-Western nature of it. I'm, I'm suggesting to people, do not take Western custody options overtly. No to London. No to Paris, no to Munich, no to uh, Montreal, you know, any Vancouver, whatever, wherever they have it. No to America, uh, no to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, it's time to get de-Westernized because the decline, going back to many things like Deagle stats, population, numbers, all of this, the trend is down now. There's bad things coming to happen, particularly for the West. There's opportunity in the East. Follow the money. Best surfers get in front of the best waves. You can't make a 10-point ride on a tiddler of a wave, even if you're the best surfer. The best surfers get out and recognize the best waves. Uh, and they don't even have to be brilliant because they've got the ride of their life just by getting on to uh, one of the biggest and best waves. And you just have to position well. And you have time now and things can be done. And we actually have services to help and you guys are offering services to help. And people watching this right now should be thinking about their optionality on jurisdiction for their precious metals, as well as having some completely off grid, which include at home, under your pool, wherever you put it. Yeah, well said, well said, Francis. I mean, there are... Uh... There are still places in this world that that do have favorable jurisdictions if if you are if you are looking to hold some assets off offshore. So I appreciate you you saying that. Uh, you know something it, it was talked about. It's not so much being talked about anymore. Or, or the hundreds of banks that are at risk of failure. In an article from Fortune.com, I, I believe it said half of U.S. banks are are failing on operations risk and potential risk from cyber attacks. And, and we saw what happened recently at the airports, Microsoft. Uh, I think it was Cloudflare. I'm not sure if it was Cloudflare, but what comes to your mind when you hear half of large U.S. banks are at susceptible risk to these, these, these things that can come up? So when someone uh, chooses to talk about banks, I just remind them, uh, as I will you in this discussion, that in essence, we're talking about uh, the intermediation of the fiat debt system. So it's just one level below. So if, if you've got a pyramid, if, if, you know, if the top's crumbling and it's, you know, it's taking it down, in an, it's a controlled demolition, those middle floors are going down uh, with it because this, whatever applied to the top, the explosives are blowing up all the way down. So the intermediation of that is the banking system is the intermediation of the fiat debt system. You borrow money into existence. You get a borrow. You get a, a an asset that's a borrowing um, that is an asset of the banks, and you're the you know you you're the you're the lender. My apologies. You're the borrower, and they the lender. 
that's their assets and you are you know you have a liability with them and you actually represent an asset to them and future earning streams out of your payments so they are an intermediation chain so they are just further down they are literally a transmission service that's how i tend to view it a very awkward cumbersome and bloated transmission service that does a lot of other things like retail banking and etc and checkbook provision and all of that but they are an intermediary system between the creation of money in the debt and fiat system so debt and fiat system collapsing it's a bit like chopping the trunk of the tree down at the bottom the tops coming down with it if the tops at the you know the retail banking system so they are an intermediation they just a, the contact between the individual i go to my bank and that system and they make sense of it and fragment it down so that they don't have to deal you know the the central banking cartel doesn't deal directly with me once they've got the technology in the place it's quite clear that they might do away with that entirely and they're going to intermediate with technology direct to me so it's going to become superficial so i absolutely expect that they're already in a pre-imploded state ready and just waiting for that foot plunger to go down and to go down and they will fail with the central banking uh, debt and fiat system so they are one and the same it's as i say it's literally like chopping a tree down and asking but what about the top branch you know isn't it going to have a different outcome no it's all coming down you cut it down to the bottom it's you know that's the root that's the full that's the full enchilada they all come coming down by association um that's that's the one aspect of it so um you i, I was going to say i love that you mentioned that there was a um an outage and as i've continued to say to everybody here hold physical cash and also hold physical gold and silver at home and around you on account of the fact that the digitization process is the ultimate gift of power to them and you are getting multiple microcosms of warning that are showing you how dangerous it is. And I have to share uh, super quick, but it's just a, a tiny uh, segment, but uh, you will enjoy it, I think, by virtue of association, just with reference to that item. But here's a sign that literally says it all. And how many places have you seen that said, we don't deal in cash anymore, cards only? Well, here's a sign, due to a worldwide IT outage, we can only accept cash until further notice. Apologies for the inconvenience. Well, let that be a warning to to us all, you know, uh, about the virtues of saying goodbye to cash. Because grit down is system down for you. You can't buy anything. And shopkeepers can't accept anything. And you just saw them admit it in a sign right there. If you don't have cash, we can't serve you. We can't run a card. We can't do that. IT service is down. Do not fall for this all in the digital system. You have to be physical. And people will know why we don't say ETFs for gold and various other things as well. Physical. Nine tenths of the law is in your grubby mitts right here in this hand. Gold bar, cash notes for emergencies, slightly higher. Banks will disappear. There's only 7%, some countries 3%, the percentage varies of the total monetary system that is actually physical cash. So holding cash is almost like seven times the worth due to scarcity of all the digits in your computer. So just by turning some of those digits in the computer into paper, in terms of scarcity, you have, a, a, you know, what, 7% to, to 93%? What's that? It's 10, 11, 12. 12 times more rare. And we, we know with gold that scarcity is part of value. In a certain set of circumstances, not always, in a certain set of circumstances, that's going to be super valuable. And I think we're going to get an opportunity where you see that and you've seen the microcosms occur on the event that you chose to mention. You know, speaking of digits and, and paper, la last question here, I'll, I'll, I'll let you head out after this. Um, Speaking of digits and paper, when we see, let's say, stock markets, uh, Western stock markets, let's say, uh, still hovering around all-time highs, including an, an intraday all-time high, I think, of 40,000 points or, or more a couple months back on the Dow Jones. It, maybe I'm too conservative here, but I, I'd be looking more at wealth protection rather than wealth creation. Maybe I'm wrong, but Francis, with talks about resets, uh, the U.S. being a nation divided, 
how or why are investors comfortably choosing to stay in the equities markets? Because they keep getting rewarded for doing so. So they stay. Uh, you get the society you incentivize. That's one of my favorite uh, sayings. Uh, you start incentivizing people for being transgender, you're going to get more transgender people. Uh, you start giving them gold Olympic medals for beating women in running, sprinting and everything. You're going to get eventually a hundred meter race with only transgender men pretending to be women. Uh, I mean, it, taken to its logical extreme, you get the society you incentivize. So people continue to do what served them well. And we talk of the stuff you portfolio, which is military industrial complex, uh, which is up 10, 15 X over the last decade and a half. Generally, um, the mag seven which continues to macro outperform, take the MAG7 out of the S&P 500, the other 493 stocks have done pretty poorly. Um, in short, it's the internationalism of statism. We have a corporate fascist society where, which is bringing a surveillance financial state that is being allowed to exist with because of its scale and significance and its cooperation with states, dark states, normal politics, etc., in a manner that it pays very little tax and sees a full-scale monopoly. There is no way that Alphabet with Google, YouTube, um, and all these other assets, uh, Android on your devices, should have the market shares they have. There is no real choice. This is Rockefeller oil, only worse, far worse. There's no antitrust anywhere. It's not a hint of it anywhere. The EU can't even get them to pay real tax. Never mind antitrust and break them up. Remember when they were chasing Bill Gates on installing for free the Internet Explorer at the expense of Netscape? That was, you know, crushing a rival because they had scale. They, the, the, these oligarchs, uh, these they're monopolies. You know, they duopolies, monopolies, and oligopolies. It means largely the business of the world is carved up between one, two, maybe three companies. So two majors and one moderate medium size that's also in some other business somewhere else and they're all making an absolute killing and as a result of this they are also the vehicles and i call something like black rock and vanguard essentially the dark cube zeppelin that hangs all over different nations and is currently hanging all over the uh, american states and is literally hoovering up the assets into a corporation that can re-anchor anywhere it likes over China in 10 years time, over Israel, who knows, wherever it chooses to domicile itself and is actually cheering on the end of nation state. Uh, Larry Fink keeps saying he can't wait. Uh, you know, he loves Bitcoin and tokenization. It will take everything away from government. And we all cheer that because we don't like government. But you don't want to cheer that to have super transnational uni party world surveillance finance communism government that's not an improvement from your lackey uh sidekick who's taking a bung from the same people to just be local government so you know we don't we go out of the frying pan into the fire with that one and those zeppelins those dark cubes hoovering up property farmland everything else this is an asset stripping corruption cycle where government is raising debt in your name that will crush you and the quality of your dollar and is purchasing physical assets in a name of a corporate entity that is hoovering all the assets up of a nation state ready to leave you as a flattened welfare state while sitting with all the gold trinkets and title deeds to all the real useful property. And that's what you're sitting in and that's what you're facing. And there's no way I can see that we successfully stop this. This is too advanced. Many people say that's not positive. That's not optimistic. It's pragmatic. It's pragmatic. I want a plan that survives that as if they've won it. If they don't win it, it's all upside for me. I'm happy days. I want to set a low hurdle and I want to clear it easily. I don't want to set, no, 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 optimism, optimism. Positivity uh, thinking is actually a disease. It's a failure to see that known liars and deceivers continue to lie and deceive and that uh, a small group of people that are empowered and conspire and have shown to do so many times are likely to do so again till they have absolute power. And the more you know about this, the more fearful they are and the more draconian power they're going to want. 
this is how it ends. Uh, it just keeps it's a vicious a cycle. And I know a tailspin is a tailspin. It's not something you pull out of easy. So in lieu of that, prepare accordingly. Physically held requires a man with a gun to come and get it off you. Uh, that's quite a few hurdles that have to be overcome. Physically held multiple jurisdictions requires lots of men in lots of different jurisdictions, all to know what you own, where you own it, and to show up with a gun and demand it off you. So you might have one or two survive in those instances, and that's the plan. Balance sheet preservation through the use of gold in multiple jurisdictions is a good plan. And positioning gold, rolling into silver, all these things we were discussing in the previous part, all play a role in maximization. But you've got to start with gold and optionality and multiple jurisdictions, multiple legals, uh, ideally throw some different languages in there. People need more passports. They need more residencies. They need a lot more prep than they've done. And that's the problem when you've lived such a good life in America. And it's a lovely place. I'm in Miami now, great big lanes and express lanes. You pay a bit more. You go super fast, all of that. It's all great. It's consumer world. The financials will bring great suffrage and great reduction of services and increases in tax that will have a leveling effect at an income level. That's difficult to see now. But trust me, it's 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 a mathematical fact. All right, Francis Hunt, it's a it's a great wake up call, and uh, <clears throat> I appreciate that you've given us avenues that that we can actually start to go on to to find solutions for our ourselves. But before we head out, can you tell us how we can follow you on social media and follow your work? There's real opportunity in every crisis. The bigger the crisis, the bigger the opportunity. The traditional financial advice is the wrong advice for the era that we find ourselves in. To really do well and the opportunity to do exceptionally well in a very short period actually is p produced in high crisis periods. In fact, it's the Chinese that have the word for both crisis and opportunity as one in one phrase. Uh, and it is uh, you have to be in such a position that the coming crisis is going to be the making of you and your future generations, which it will give you the opportunity to do. And we are here focused specifically on reset economics and the reset times we're in. We follow the charts, we get the setups, we take the trades and make the investments. And we also put in place not only how to make the money, but how to protect that money once it's made. And you need those things before you become wealthy. So one example is we have a full offboarding solution for crypto for those that might be participating in a future alt run that's coming. These tokens will be going up immensely because they're part of the statism mechanism they need to put all your property on blockchain and do everything else. What happens though, at the end of that run, you will find huge capital gains tax bills on that. And same for gold, potentially. They might try tax you out of your assets, property and homes. You are rich. Look at the nice home you have. Other people are on the streets and sleeping under bridges. There's going to be a culture of envy politics. It's going to be very Bolshevik. They chased after the middle classes and they crushed them. We are focused on this to give you real opportunities of existence where you will have a better life, retain your wealth and maximize it during reset season. That is our fourth, you know, our primary, primary focus. And to do that, uh, just pop over to the YouTube channel, The Market Sniper or The Crypto Sniper. Or if you'd like to talk to us, book a call on themarketsniper.com and find out a little bit more about what we're about. Uh, thank you for having me on. There's awesome, awesome, real opportunities out there. But you have to acknowledge the night to see the brightness of the day uh, in terms of those opportunities uh, that are being presented. And that's our sole uh, raison d'etre to help you do that. Amen to all of that. Francis Hunt, I, I hope we can do this again soon. I'm looking forward to it. And um, let's see how things roll out come election time in, in November. Indeed, Patrick. Thanks for, as ever for having me on. And uh, take action, whatever you do, whether it's with me or anybody else out there, you listeners. Don't get bummed out by it. Uh, actually taking action on everything, your health, your fitness, actually just lifts your mood uh, and takes you forward. It's also a mental game. Uh, be in your best health. Uh, do all you can for yourself physically as well. Uh, and we look forward to uh, appearing again soon, Patrick. All right. Thanks again, Francis. Look forward to having you back on. Take care of yourself. Bye for now. That was the Market Sniper, Francis Hunt, sharing his views and insights on precious metals and the economy. 
To see more of Francis's work, go to www.themarketsniper.com. If you like this video, please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. All are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.